So in this trips logistics example, we were trying to see how to go for a warehouse lease option using decision trees. And so in the previous video, we looked for the first option where we only consider the spot market. But now in this video, we are going to look into the second option and where we will consider a three year lease for a fixed amount of warehouse space and additional requirement from the spot market. All other values and prices will remain same as in the previous case. So if you haven't seen the previous video, before watching this, please have a look on the previous one where we solved the spot market option. So now this is our setup here and this was our decision tree. So again, I'm repeating, if you don't know how to get here, please have a look on the previous couple of videos. So then you will know how to form these. Okay. So now again, we are starting from here and this is our demand and these are our prices. And now in this option, we say that we lease a fixed amount of space and the fixed amount, we set it to 100,000 square feet. Okay. So for all the situations, we lease up to 100,000 square feet and any additional uh, space requirement, we will be buying it from the spot market. For instance here, so our demand was 144,000, but we could lease 100,000. So the additional 44,000, we will buy it from the spot market. And in this option, one of the binding we have is that even though our demand goes below 100,000, we still have to buy 100,000. Okay. And in those situations, we will not buy any space from the spot market. And our revenue calculation is exactly the same as we were doing before. So the demand will be multiplied with the revenue price, which is 1.22, which we actually can see here in the cell E6. Okay. So we are just multiplying this and it is same for all of them. Okay. So we could just drag it and we'll get the same result, right? And for cost, we have now cost from two places. One is the lease option. Okay. So what we are leasing is we are leasing 100,000 and for per square feet lease, we pay one USD. So that's why we multiply it with one. Okay. And the values will be same. We know, but just to do it right, we are putting the value of one here. And then our second part of the cost is coming from the warehouse, that warehouse space that we buy from the spot market, which is 44,000 here. That is in D7 column. Okay. D7 cell multiplied with the price of a spot market, which is 1.45 for this respective cell. Okay. And then we will just do the multiplication with all the respective cells. And then if we just drag it, so we had to consider the spot, spot price for only up to this point, because after that we will not buy anything from a spot price and it will be zero. So we can see it just here. So you see all of them are just 100,000, the, the, the space we buy from the lease. Okay, long term three year lease. And for our profit, we have to just deduct the cost from our revenue. So that's our profit. Okay. And it's going to be the same because it is done. And this coloring, so the coloring, please have a look in the previous video if you don't know how I colored it. So here the idea is that each of the rows here represent one of the nodes here. And for coloring, the way I colored is that all the nodes that was going out from this node in period one was yellow and all the node going out from the second node period one is colored as blue. So that's how I colored it. So each of the colors represent all the nodes going out from each of these period one nodes. Okay. And this just makes my life easy when I will be do doing the summation here later. Okay. Just to identify them easily or quickly. So here on period one, so if we have a look in our situation here, so here we have four nodes. Okay. So these four of them and our maximum demand is 120,000 and these are our prices. Okay. And so first we actually look into the expected profit, which we bring from our future period. So from period two, we bring them into period one. So what we are doing here, for this node, all the nodes that was going out from here had a probability of 0 0.25. So we multiply 0 0.25, multiply with all the expected profit from these nodes that were originating from this node from period one. Okay. And here you see, we take the sum of them. So similarly, that's what we did in all these cases, as you can see. Okay. 
in all these four cases. So we were just bringing the expected profits from the future value from peer two to peer one. Okay. But when we do it, we have to consider the discounting factor. Okay. The net present value of the money. So as we are discounting only one peer, and if you remember our discounting rate was 10%. So that's why we divide the value with 1.1. Okay. And we did the same for all of them, as you can see here, right? You can see here. As we mentioned earlier, in this lease option, we're taking 100,000 fixed for the three years in lease and the rest we will buy from the spot market. So here, when our demand is 120,000, we have to buy 20,000 from the spot market, right? So for the profit calculation of this term, this period, period one, what we have to do is, so in the first part here, as you can see, we are just multiplying the demand with the revenue cell from here so that we get the revenue and then we deduct our costs. So in these two part, we deduct our cost. The first part here is 100,000 on lease with a price of $1. So we, de we deduct it. The second part here is that this 20,000, we are buying it on a spot price. So we have to deduct that price. Plus we have to consider the profit that we are getting from the future period, right? So that is this value here. So that's what is our equation. And we, if we just drag it, the equation is same for all of them. You see all the values are same. It follows the same principle, okay? So first part is revenue, then we deduct the two costs, and then we add up the net present value of the expected profit from the future period. So that's how we actually get the profits for the period one. So now we come to period zero. This was our starting point. So here, as you can see, we have 100,000 and it was our our spot price was $1.2. The probability was 0 0.25 for all of them, all the nodes originating from this period zero node. So we will just multiply all the profits with 0 0.25 to get the expected profit for our period zero. And that's what we did. And this was our, this was our value, okay? We had 18,000. As we are considering this expected profit from one period in the future, we have to convert it to the period zero by discounting again. And for 10% rate, we will divide it by 1.1, okay? So this is, this is our present value, net present value of the expected profit of the future period. So now when we'll calculate the real net present value for all the three years, so then what we will do is, we'll again first calculate the revenue, so 100,000 multiplied with 1.22. So this first part is our revenue minus our leasing cost, so that was, $1 per 100,000 uh, square feet. So we deduct it plus the profit, the expected profit, the present value of the profit that we are expecting from all the future cash flows. Okay, so then this is our final net present value for this alternative of going for fixed lease of 100,000 for three years and rest the additional ones we will buy from the spot market. Okay, so this is our expected net present value of our profit at period zero. So in the next video, we will look into what happens when we go for a flexible lease option.